Hello, good morning, and welcome to the Daily Sun Echo Television. Today, the 21st of October 2024, your morning programs where we actually bring to your table some of the happenings on our Nigerian newspaper. So you can do well to follow us via Facebook, drop your comment, drop your views. We are always interested in what you have to say regarding some of the situations happening here in the country, Nigeria. I am Sela Lai Shidasho. I'm doing this program alongside Rachel Tenzi. Good morning. Good morning, Sela. All right, we have quite a number of papers this morning, and we would love to start with the Voice of Liberty newspaper. The big story on the Voice of Liberty, national greed to be handed over to independent operators, a statement from the federal government. The federal government, through the NERC, has said discussions are ongoing to transfer the management of the national grid to independent system operators in line with the provisions of the Electricity Act 2023. Shatima to represent Tunibu at 2024 CHOGM in Samoa. 20 million out of school children recruitment pool for Boko Haram, a statement from former President Obasanjo. Federal government plans 5% tax on telecom services and orders. I won't descend into the gutters where you feel at home, Atiku Knox Wiki. Address country's economic hardship, stop weaponizing DSS, Serap tells Tinibu. Heather writes AGF, urges recovery of over $55 billion owed Nigeria by IOCs. Army HQ names Abdul Salami Bagudu as acting chief as COAS Labaja embarks on leave. And that's all the news on Voice of Liberty. All right, let's take a look at New Telegraph newspaper, starting with revenue, federal government's collection costs up 83.7% to 698.75 billion naira. More detail of the story can be found in the paper. A report on the paper as well is saying Dongote Refinery now produces uh, two over three of Nigerian's jet fuel. You can find um, that story on page eight. Army headquarters debug reports of Lagbaja's death. As you can see from the earlier paper, he is on a leaf, not dead. You can draw a trade more detail of that on page six and seven. Enugu government police insists no stay at home assure citizens of safety. You can draw a trade detail of that. Payment platform, why we rejected IPPIS, GIF, um, MIS by ASU. You can read more detail of why they did that. Concerning the US poll, which is to take place in November, we're seeing Elon Musk to give away $1 million per day to Palace Livia voters. You can do well to read that on page six. The big story, which is concerning the local government financial autonomy anti-corruption agency to deploy tracking system coming from sources. As the federal government seek grassroots development to reduce rural urban migration, um, contain insecurity, create jobs and others. More detail found on page two. Shaitima to represent Tunibu at the CHOGM 2024. Next election key to APC, Tinubu's re-election coming from Ganduji. Says the party, um, we have a right of following that. You can do well to read more detail of that on page 25. Go on to birthday, where we say we need to heal wounds of the past coming from Peter Ubi. Apabio admits economic um, assures Tinubu government will guarantee a better future. As well, we have Bode George Ojis Kikere Eku to end judicial Rascality says judiciary becoming offensive to Nigerians. You can read that on page 3, 14, and 16. I was 25% deaf without knowing it, says Obasanjo. And we have a study that says caffeine in blood might affect body fat, diabetes, risk. So for those who are actually getting addicted to caffeine, I think it's important to read that study on page 27. And that's all the New Telegraph newspaper. On Nigerian News Direct, Sanwo Olu Oyebanji orders rally on Do APC ahead of Guba poll. Eleven dead as call groups clash in all sites and on page 21. 
will power grid current upgrade of infrastructure to prevent frequent collapse will take two years, a statement from the TCN MD. The big story on the paper, Nigeria's 20 million out-of-school children are potential Boko Haram recruits Obasanjo wants. PMS hits 1,090 naira to a litre in Lagos as marketers adjust pump price again. NDLE arrests not two businessmen at Lagos Airport over cocaine loud trafficking. You can find details on page 23 and that's all the news on Nigerian News Direct. On the metric newspaper, electricity cheaper in Nigeria than neighboring countries, says TCN. You can read more detail of what the transmission company of Nigeria is saying regarding um, electricity in the country. As well, we are saying God is the greatest. Victor Boniface speak after a car crash. You can read detail of that on page 22. Nigerian Army refused COAS Lagbaja's rumored death. Pull out 15 retired Atiri Corps General, you can do detail, or you can read detail of that in the paper. Tinubu gets new chief security officer from DSS to success Ade Boyiga Fayase. You can read that on page 3. Tension in Anambra as cult related clash leaves at least 10 dead. And we have hashtag NSAS Memorial, which was yesterday. Protesters recount the ordeal with the writer here saying, I was beaten by police. My glass is taken away without any provocation. Police release all arrested hashtag NSAS Memorial demonstrators. Why we arrested demonstrators, police opened up. You can read more detail of that memorial on page 2. Stop weaponizing DSS, focus on economic revival, Serap tells Tinibu. Nigerian Railway Corporation names Oluyusi acting MD as Okiheri bows out. She team out to represent Nigeria at the 2024 CHOGM in Samoa, data found in the paper. As well, we have a, um, another story for those who are into entertainment. You can read that on page 21. And we have a picture story welcoming back the president, President Bola Tinibu, returned to Abuja after two weeks' vacation in the United Kingdom. And that's on a metric newspaper. First news newspaper on that we have hope brighter future of Agro Assured Nigerians. Part 8 in the air, UK deports 44 Nigerians. No, I foresee that home order and a good CP help residents. Police condemned jungle justice or this public to uphold the rules of the law. NERC calls public hearing on power grid disturbances. Army retires 15 top generals. The big story on the paper, Nigeria raising future Boko Haram or Basenjo on 20 million out of school children. Police arrest release and SARS protesters marking fourth anniversary of Lekki massacre. Army debunks rumor of chief of staff's death, and we have a picture where we can see the Bauchi State Governor Bala Mohammed warmly welcomes ex-president Olusegun Obasanjo during his visit to inaugurate key road projects marking a milestone in the state's development. This happened on Sunday, and that's all the news on First News newspaper. Right, let's take a look at another paper, which is the Punch newspaper, where we have current insecurity was than worse than during my government. Current insecurity worse than during my government, coming from the former president of Basanjo. Petrol marketers import 123 million liters. Continue talks with Dunkwiti as we're saying that um, against the, the 25 million liters that the um, Dunkwiti refinery is supposed to produce, is producing just 10 million, and that is not um, enough for the daily consumption of Nigerians. So we see there is a need for importation. You can read more detail of that on page 35. Army Box, the chief of Army staff, dead, remote, retires 15 generals. Concerning Ondo governorship polls, where we have Ganduji APC governors who are grief aspirants for Aida Tiwa. You can find that on page 21. INEC rejects PDP requests for state-wrecked redeployment, as well as still on page 21. 
Concerning the Greek collapse, we have seen that the Greek has collapsed about 105 times in 10 years, despite $1.4 billion loan. Now, we have a writer here that says government fails to access additional $2.96 billion World Bank approved electricity infrastructure loans. Buhari record 93 Greek collapses. Tenebu 12, incessant grip collapse worries NERC and consumers. Where we've seen that the power minister has said that um, the grip collapse is imminent, um, which is actually what we are going to be seeing because um, the power plants cannot take it. And that is why the government, federal government, have advised that states should look for a way to start you know, creating their own electricity. So we look forward to see what will be the outcome of all this. Do well to read that story on page two. Concerning the hashtag NSAS Memorial, MSD activists tackle police over protesters' harassment. That you can find on page four to five. And we have Super Eagle striker Boniface survive a car crash in Germany. Data found on page four to six. Foreign investors dumped 355 billion naira stocks over forex crisis. And we have Canada based nurse to businessmen nap over drug trafficking. Oya Dam Sak Ogu Lagos communities as flood water rises. You can find that story on page 6 and 45. And we have African School of Governance initiative that in Rwanda, you can read what that is all about on the front page of the paper. And that's all on the punch newspaper. On Nigerian Tribune, close ranks to win on the governorship election, Ganduje charges a grip aspirants. The writer says Southwest APC stakeholders converge on Ondo. LG Financial Autonomy eyes on federal government to enforce Supreme Court judgment. African leaders tap Mugalu to head African School of Governance. The big story on the paper, 16 months of decline, critical market indicators defy federal government, World Bank's reform optimism. Credibility of reform in question, a statement from Adebajo. Exporters, multinational companies repatriating export proceeds. Government not interested in citizens' welfare, statement from an economist. You can find all the details on page 12. Tenebo comments Oyebanji's statesmanship. Equity governor holds anniversary Thanksgiving. Ex-governor salute his leadership qualities. On cooking gas, continuous increase affecting our purchasing power. Nigerians are groaning. Expert warns against market makeshift CNG kit installation, tax government on incentive to reduce cost of CNG conversion kits and installation. Labaja's rumor death, fake news Nigerian army says. How federal government delayed disbursement of $314 million food production facility affected food security. The writer says as food import bill hits five-year high of 1.5 trillion naira in the first quarter of the year 2024, we have 7.8 trillion naira spent in six years. Pressure mounts on Damagun to allow scheduled NEC meeting. This is concerning the tussle going on in PDP. Constitutional breach must be avoided coming from the NWC member. The last statement is, um, the last story is a statement from Fayoshe. I am with Oye Banji. PDP can take their party. You can find details of his statement on page 23 and that's all the news on Nigerian Tribune. On the Daily Times newspaper, need come to host seven Nigerian diaspora investment summit in Abuja between November 5th to 7th. Do well to read more detail for those who are interested in that summit. Why we rejected federal government IPPIS, GIFMIS in seats on Utah. This is a report coming from ASU says finances of universities should be managed by their governing council. Detail on page two. African leaders stop Mugalu to head the African School of Governance. You can read that on page eight. PPP can solve infrastructure challenges in power and others coming from the ICRC boss. And the report coming from World Bank, only 4.1% of Nigerian workers will benefit from the minimum wage increase. You can read that on page 14. 
Four years after hashtag NSAS protests, human rights abuses by police still rampant coming from Amnesty International urges the federal government to address human rights violation by police. Lagos CP orders release of detained hashtag NSAS fourth anniversary protesters. Obasan Joy saying, I was 25% deaf without knowing it. You can find that story on page six. We have a picture story where we can see Nima um, trying to look at some of the affected areas and also conducting a comprehensive um, assessment of some of the five local government areas in Delta State. Um, you can see the picture story over there, and that's all in the Daily Times newspaper. On this day newspaper, statement from Senate President Akpabio, hardship not caused by Tenebu, he will leave lasting legacy for Nigerians. The writer says security experts say economic hardship has weakened family values, fueling cyber crimes. Stakeholders raise concern over state's capacity to regulate power. Tinibu mandates Shetima to lead nation's delegation to 2024 CHOGM in Samoa. Chief of Army Staff Torit Labaja speaks to Tinibu on health status. President prays for his quick recovery. Army group dismissed that rumor as fake news. The big story on the paper, EFCC, ICPC not illegal, enabling law properly passed a statement from Falana. You can find details of his statement on page 5. I congratulated Goan at 90 because Nigeria must move on with love, not hate, a statement from Peter Obi. And we have a picture, 2024 UUBO Annual Investigation Compliance and Ethics Summit, where we can see members um, that attended representing MTN Nigeria and all that this happened in Lagos. And that's all the news on this day newspaper. On the Blueprint newspaper, only 17% SDGs healthcare target on track coming from the World Health Organization. You can read that story on page 14. First Bank Holdings reverse right issue to 25 Naira per share. So for those who have been buying shares there, you can read that update on page 23. As well, Super Eagle star Bonnie Faye survived auto crash after team's victory. Mob action, jingle, uh, ju jungle justice on police personnel worries, IGP orders a probe. Where we have inspector slain on no quarry attack, Okada rider kill officer in Lagos. Anambara called clash claim 24 in reverse gunman attack. You can start reading that story on the front page and continue on page 8. Reports of Lagbaja's death, fake news, army clarifies that. You can read that in the paper. Still, we're having the story that's making it on most, making rounds on most of the papers coming from Obasan Joe, where he's saying the 20 million out of school children recruitment ground for Boko Haram. Donates hearing aid in Bauchi and commissions project where we saw he said he has been 25% deaf without knowing. Uh, so in a way to actually help those who are suffering with one um, hearing impair or the other, he has to need some hearing aids. We hope that it gets to the people who really need it and we hope that nobody will make money out of these free aids. You can do well to read that on page 8. Relief items, food committee, various 555,000 um, Borneo, and as well we have Nara up by 2.4%. This is coming from the CBN. And then two school girls confirmed dead in a boy gas explosion. You can read detail of that in the paper. We have the picture story where we can see um, the former first lady, patient Jonathan, the former president, good luck Jonathan, former president, Lucia Gobasanjo, first lady, um, Oluremi Tinubu, the former head of state general Yakubu Gowan, his wife, at the tenth giving service to commemorate the 90th birthday of General Gowan in Abuja. This happened on Saturday, and that's all on Blueprint newspaper. Shall I, before we move mm. to the next paper, um, I've seen this story. It is the big story on Blueprint. However, it was on the previous paper concerning mob action, jungle justice on police personnel, worry, mm. IGP and others um, probe. He orders a probe. And this jungle justice is as a result of the police not doing their job. It's all, it's 
all of a sudden a problem because now your officers yes, are being involved. affected mm. by this jungle justice. For years, we've seen jungle justice take place in Nigeria and people have kicked against it. When chaos or anything is about to erupt in a place, it is expected that we have police officers on ground to stop it from happening. Jungle justice is not accepted anywhere. If we are calling ourselves a civilized country, mm. then we should not even hear jungle justice. We have the entire world, to a large extent, have moved past that era. You, because there are people who have been accused wrongly and were killed with jungle justice. So no matter how terrible a crime is, there is a need for the person to pass through law as expected. And the police have not done anything. We've seen communities where jungle justice have thrived. And it is not without the presence of police. You sit down, you fold mm. your arms, and you do nothing about it. But now the tables have turned. And your officers are facing jungle justice because you refuse to do something about it. It is thriving and becoming the order of the day, and you are not being spared. This only shows the fact that until everybody wakes up and do their job in this country, you think that the problem doesn't affect you. But the thing about crime is that it grows. Anything unlawful is given the ground, it breeds and becomes strong. That even you who have refused to fight it get affected mm. at the end of the day. Mm. And this is just but the result of that. Every community where one individual or other have faced Jungle justice was not a community that there was no presence of security personnel whatsoever, mm. but you have allowed it, and then now this is the outcome. Other than directing a probe, ordering a probe because your officers have been affected by jungle justice, I, I expect better that you tell your officers, your policemen out there, not to allow jungle justice, whether it is done on a police or on a civilian or on just a nobody or a criminal. It shouldn't be accepted. This is a wake-up call, not for a probe, just because your officers were being killed through jungle justice, but telling your uh, um, um, officers to do the needful whenever certain things arise that is not expected. You're supposed to calm the situation. You're supposed to take hold uh, of that criminal, and you're supposed to take him under custody and wait for his trial and everything. And until that person is found guilty and be sentenced to whatever uh, uh, um, um, sentence that he will be given to according to the court of law for whosoever, nobody, be it a police officer or a, uh, uh, an individual, nobody deserves jungle justice. This is a wake-up call. Don't just probe. Let it not be a sentimental mm. probe, but that a wake-up call concerning our justice system entirely. Very true, very true. Now, moving to the next paper, which is peak newspaper. Nigeria has become burial ground for policies, a statement from Obasanjo. DSS boss reportedly removes Tenebu's top bodyguard appoint replacement. The big story on the paper, Vood Aidatiwa to guarantee growth development, APC chief time Deacon Adewale urges on the people. Police release answers protesters hours after detention. We will continue to criticize Fubara's government, Rivers APC chairman is saying. Ganduje Sawolu, Southwest APC leaders in Ondo. And that's all the news on Pick Newspaper. All right, before we continue further with the paper review, we'd we'll love to take a time out at this moment. Quite a lot to chew. We're looking at the national grid collapse where we're seeing that hopefully it might be privatized totally. As well as we're seeing that marketers are talking about importing of, of about 125 million liters of PMS into the country. And then we are also seeing the issue of the jungle justice where the IGP of police is condemning that. So we'll do well to, you know, go through the papers and when we come back, we will continue the paper review. Please stay tuned with us. Make your everyday informative, make your everyday count. Know your world, daily affairs, national and international with authentic news events as they unfold on Global News and Zoom on Nigeria, Monday to Friday at 1 p.m.
Welcome back. For those who are just tuning in, the program is The Dailies. We have been looking at a number of stories on the paper where we're seeing the president is back in the country after um, his leaf break in the United Kingdom for about two weeks. We've seen that the vice president will be out again for another summit in Samoa. And then we're seeing that uh, concerning the national grid collapse, we're seeing that hopefully they might, um, the discourse might be privatized because of the issue of the you know, the Greek collapse we're having as well. We are seeing that the uh, former president of Boston is talking about uh, over 20 million out of school children being a breeding ground for more recruits for Boko Haram. We're seeing that there was a bloodbath in Anambra State, which is actually suspect to be a cold clash. So we have quite a number of stories on the front page of the paper. Please do well, grab the paper, review, you know, go through the story, drop your own views concerning that. We'd love to hear your own inputs about that. I still have to reach out with me. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. All right, let's take a look at another paper, which is the Leadership Newspaper. Touch Bank said industrial record pays second dividend in four years. You can read that on page 10. DSS replaces President's Chief Security Officer. And on fact check, why did Wiki say Nigerians have rejected a tiku? And you can find both trending and fact check on page 4 of the Leadership Newspaper. Consumers lament the rising costs of cooking gas. You can read that in the paper. Gowan is father of Nigerians' unity coming from Tinubu, Buhari, and Obasanjo. The big story on the paper, four years after hashtag NSAS, we have police brutality, right abuse still persisting. Stakeholders worry, call for urgent reforms. Police released the hashtag NSAS anniversary protesters. It was a missed opportunity coming from experts. You can read all that on page 7. UK deport dozens of Nigerians and then concerning flood. But we have Borno community verifies 55,000 households. Bandits adopt, um, abduct RMAFC coordinator in Sanfara State. Labaja not dead, says the army. You can read detail of that in the paper. We have some picture story where we can see some of the governors, where we can have the governor of, we have the governor of Gombe State and also that of Bauchi State. You can do well to grab the paper and read more detail of any of the story that is of interest to you. On the Guardian newspaper, federal government's budget in logjam as multiple appropriations seek attention. Hashtag NSAS, four years after Amnesty International stands alone over continued police abuses. Only urgent neck will avoid impulsion, PDP ex-official members won. How Buhari reversed Nigeria's 16-year economic gains by World Bank. Security heightens over IPOP seat at home order. A minimum wage defaulting states may face industrial unrest in November. 20 million out-of-school children, potential Boko Haram recruits, Obasa and Joe wants. Touch Bag said industry record paid second dividend in four years. Move around daytime to understand Nigerians' plight, Huruwa tells Tinibu. And that's all the news on the Guardian newspaper. On Daily Sun newspaper, where we have African leaders launch African School of Governance Initiative, where we have Mugalu appointed a pioneer president, and that is in um, Rwanda. You can do a read more detail of that story. Nigeria misses 40 billion, 4 million barrel per day oil reserves production target. You can start reading on the front page and do continue on page 24. Bloodbath in Anambra, Edo, Rivers, and Castina, where we have the writer here saying 15 killed in suspected cult clash in Aqua. Gunmen murder police inspector, four others in Edo and Rivers. One killed as terrorists attack Castina community, more detail on page 4. Businessmen abandon vehicle importation over high clearance cost dollar scarcity. Tinibu gets new CSO as DSS rejects security team. Police release protesters commemorating the hashtag NSAS anniversary at Lekki Tollgate. Enugu government police insists no seat at home assures citizens of security. You can read that on page 6. We still have the picture story 
during the 90th birthday Thanksgiving service commemorating the Gowan 90th birthday in Abuja at the weekend. And that's all on Daily Sun newspaper. On Vanguard newspaper, Mogalu appointed President African School of Governance. CSO's kick as police arrest despair, hashtag NSAS memorial protesters. Go on at 90, Obi replies critics says Nigeria needs love forgiveness to move forward. The big story on the paper, federal government zero duty food import policy faces fresh hurdles. The writer says customs agents hint at confusion among implementation agencies, inflation, exchange rate defeat policy objectives, a statement from an analyst. Police, policy not optimal, this is a statement from Afrinvest. You can find all the details on page 21. Scores killed in Anambara rivers called clashes for killed including policemen in a doe attack. DSS replaces Tinubu CSO Fasasi with Rashid Lawal. NAS proposed reintroduction of 5% excise duty on telecom and betting services. Serap to Tinubu stop weaponizing security agencies against Nigerians. On sports, Libyan wants Libya punished for Super Eagles treatment we have cross um, sections of pictures where we can see the hashtag NSAS protesters arrested in lagos and that's all the news on vanguard newspaper a new nigerian newspaper nigerians and the tenable's economic reform is a story on page five which you should read northern governors do need 950 million naira to support jigawa tanka explosion victims Kaduna Council polls election didn't hold in 12 local government areas coming from the Middle Belt Forum. NDLEA bus drug cartel intercepts 7 billion naira worth of opium. Data found on page 6. PDP LP forms over Kaduna local government polls where the writer here is saying Senator LA vows to push for INEX conducting of local government polls nationwide. And then we have LPCs allowing such electoral fraud go on challenge should set dangerous precedents for future election. You can read details of that on the front page and on page four. Don't let World Bank IMF control you. A very very cautious tenable. Don't let World Bank IMF control you. A very very cautious tenable. You can find out on page two. Borno Flood Relief Committee verifies over 55,000 households for relief distribution. As well, we have Ochi Idoma calls for synergy between governing council management of the FUSHO. One dies, one on life support, nine sustained injury from Ibuyi gas explosion, which you can find on page four. And that's all the new Nigerian newspaper. On the Nation newspaper, no room for secession by any ethnic group, statement from the federal government. Living together an obligation, not optional. We will end Heather Farmer clashes, minister is assuring Nigerians. Go on sterling leadership and inspiration, says Tinibu. NHF's 21 trillion naira accessible for housing, says FHA, you can find details on page 5. DSS replaces Tenable CSO, police free, hashtag NSAS protesters in Lagos. Ekiti PDP want fire share expelled. You can find details of these stories on page 5 and 6. Still on the paper, IG orders manhunt for killers of three policemen in Lagos and Edo. CBN extends suspension of cash deposit fees. Native doctor client held for burying man alive in failed fortification bid. You can find details of this start story on page six, and that's all the news on the nation. All right, let's take a look at Business Day newspaper, where we have how Nigerians' economy can bounce back. Economic revenue diversification seen as a game changer. Enabling environment needed to attract investment. This is coming from an expert. You can find details of that on page 31. CBN Titans liquidity tap with 7.6 trillion naira mop, mop up. You can find that in the paper. 
consumption to production why nigerians energy subsidies need a shift oil measures to raise 2025 20, exploration investment by 60 percent touch bank set industry record pays second dividend in four years more detail on page 32 and we have a picture story from standard bank you can do well to get the paper and read more detail of any other story that is of interest to you. On Punchpot Extra, the big story net winner survives crash. Lava Kosen issue update on Boniface recovery after car accident, where we can see footage of the damage sustained to the car and how he is doing well with a thank you Lord caption. You can find details on page seven. Knock knock. Orokodare signals a Guavoyen with seventh goal for Jank. Simon Render assist. We have Potom Award trills Flamingos Chidi. Stones cost late winner as Citizens Edge host. Reds beat Blues to get top. You can find details on page eight. And we have Laporta charged with alleged fraud. Ateta addresses Saliba red card. Details can be found on page 4. City ready to part ways with Walker. Mareska singles add Madukwe for praise. And then we have McGregor rages after losing $500,000 bet against Iguano. New Zealand beat SA to win first T20 World Cup. And then we have the boys once Joshua ahead of rematch. Osime bicycle kick goal walk off at Galatasaray. You can find details on page 7. And that's all the news on Point Sports Extra. All right, let's take a look at the business AM newspaper where we have Afri's Bank, $2 billion for Africans creatives. And then on finance and investment, we have domestic investor, NGX Learn Domestic. And then we have uh, government people, comment disconnect. You can find detail of that on page A. Federal government seek 1.1 billion naira private sector funding to boost the power sector. The big story on the paper, Nigeria's inflation rebound strokes concern of worsening economic woes. As well, we have financing food security will yield high um, returns, taming the world's affordable housing crisis. As well, we have um, agriculture loose ground in FDI inflows. You can find detail of that. We also have um, a, a, a picture story where we can see the CBN. Um, from, from, we're talking about the governor of the CBN as well as we are also having the chairman of the J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. when the latter led a team from the J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. on a strategic visit to the head office of the CBN in Abuja recently. And that's all on business, AM newspaper, as well as how far we can go on the program this morning. Thank you to all our supporters, our viewers, as well as thank you, Rachel, for doing You're this. You're welcome, Sally. All right, till we come your way again tomorrow. Please do have a wonderful day ahead.